this is the Smart Avalanche Rover. It remotely evaluates avalanche dangers to make it safer for ski patrollers and other people who would need to know about the snowpack profile and avalanche conditions. Information is displayed to the user via this uh, LCD screen. And these two joysticks are used to control indiv individually the left and right motors. And then these buttons uh, serve various purposes. For example, this red button will get weather data based on uh, one of the sensors in the controller itself. And so it'll display uh, the barometric pressure, the percent humidity, altitude, and the ambient temperature. Um, that's all important to avalanche experts and backcountry skiers. So to drive it, basically we run a closed loop proportional integral derivative feedback system that the user sends raw RPM values and the closed loop feedback system allows the motors to um, keep the desired RPM no matter what friction is encountered. So if you lift it up and, I, and he gives it a slow value, I can grab it and it will work really hard to maintain that speed. And this is great for going up slopes um, because it will adjust the PWM signal accordingly to get up the slope. And then turn it. There we go. We have an array of photo cells on the top of the rover in each corner. So if the rover were to be covered with snow or I don't know, your coat or whatever, uh, the emergency system would go on or off. Right now we have uh, we have a tensiometer in the back that adjusts the threshold voltage that we'll consider tripped for these sensors. So if we adjust the the analog reading here. It'll go off, the siren will go off. There you go. So what I can do is I can set it back to the threshold for this room. So right now, if I just leave it uncovered, uh, the light, it's sensing the light, it's taking that threshold, and it won't uh, set off the siren. But if I cover two of the sensors, two or more of the sensors, it'll go off. Like if it gets caught in that light, for instance, you'd be able to perhaps hear it through the snow. We have a night mode that disables the emergency system. So we have some blue underglow and red headlight LEDs. So that'll let you keep track of where the rover is. And it looks pretty cool. So basically, we have an accelerometer on here that does some math that can calculate the slope angle and feed it back to the feed it back and draw it on the screen for you. So you just gotta press this one button right here come back, the slope right now is 33 degrees, so that would be an avalanche prone slope. You can drop it up further. Come back with even a steeper angle, 41 degrees. All we have enough charge. Now we'll demonstrate the probing mechanism. So we want to get a pressure versus depth profile to see the relative densities of the snowpack. Basically, you're looking for a hard layer over a soft layer, which is very prone to sliding. We'll uh, press this button to initiate a test, basically, and it'll, the servo motor will shove this rod into the snow, which is cotton right now. Um, and it'll live stream data back to the screen for the user to analyze. So notice the, the spikes are increasing as the cotton becomes more compressed. It gets, it's a little variable with the cotton in there. It's not totally consistent. Proportional der integral derivative code was written last onto the Arduino, and that controls the treads, sends the PWM signals, and, and adjusts them. And this is the probe module in here. You can see the two, it's friction driven by two compression fits, driven by a continuous motion servo motor. This is our siren, really loud. and it sits nicely in there, and that's our accelerometer mounted horizontally. And this is the current sensor we use, and we drive an equation to um, convert input current to pressure based on the area of the probe. These drive motors, what allows us to do the PID is these encoders, which we calculate our live RPM from, and that is compared with the desired value sent by the joysticks. All the components are soldered up onto some uh, proto boards, basically. Uh, we have the transmitter right here, the radio receiver, um, and they're set at different frequencies so there's no interference. And then this LCD screen is a TFT LCD screen.